<clears throat> good morning folks welcome to our prayers today um, good to be with you so using the uh, daily prayer app on the church of england um, website for morning prayer um, tuesday the 21st of february still our hearts for a moment <coughs> in the stillness we ask the lord to breathe upon us his holy spirit afresh jesus said receive the holy spirit so today we pray you'll come to us O oh Lord, fill our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits with your presence. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation may we rejoice in this day you have made as we refresh from the depths of sleep open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will <coughs> that the world may rejoice and give you praise blessed be God Father Son and Holy Spirit blessed be God forever the night has passed and the day lies open before us let us pray with one heart and mind as we keep a moment's silence As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. There's one psalm today, Psalm 73. <clears throat> the reason there's one is because um, it's a long reading, but not too long. Truly God is loving to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. Nevertheless, my feet were almost gone. My steps are well nigh slipped. For I was envious of the proud. I saw the wicked in such prosperity. For they suffer no pains and their bodies are sleek and sound. They come to no misfortune like other folk, nor are they played as others are. Therefore pride is a necklace, and violence wraps them like a cloak. Their iniquity comes from within. The conceits of their hearts overflow. They scoff and speak only of evil. They talk of oppression from on high. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue ranges round the earth. And so the people turn to them, and find in them no fault. They say, how should God know? Is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the wicked, ever at ease, they increase their wealth. Is it in vain that I cleansed my heart? and wash my hands in innocence. All day long have I been stricken and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak as they do, I should have betrayed the generation of your children. Then I thought to understand this, but it was too hard for me, until I entered the sanctuary of God, and understood the end of the wicked. Have you set them in slippery places, you cast them down to destruction? How suddenly do they come to destruction? Perish, 
and come to a fearful end. As with a dream when one awakes, so Lord, when you arise, you will despise their image. When my heart became embittered, and I was pierced to the quick, I was but foolish and ignorant. I was like a brute beast in your presence. Yet, I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing upon earth that I desire in comparison with you. Though my flesh and my heart fail me, God is the strength of my heart, my portion for ever. Truly those who forsake you will perish, you will put to silence the faithless who betray you. But it is good for me to draw near to God. In the Lord God have I made my refuge, that I am a tell of all your works. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Interesting there, in the psalm, the person is looking at the wicked and saying, why, why? My Lord and then um, asking questions of himself really and, and saying you know why, why have I kept myself pure what what's going on and it's this um, sense of turmoil that the person who writes the psalm is going through then it says until I enter the sanctuary of God and it was in the presence of God that his thinking um, came into line it came into perspective it came into the place where God wanted it to be so whatever um, our turmoil, our confusion, our thinking is this morning, as we pray together, uh, let our prayers be that we, we are enabled to come into focus in terms of being in the presence of God and seeing things the way that he does through uh, the work of the Holy Spirit within us. A reading now from John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 22, and to the end. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside and he spent some time there with them and baptised. John also was baptising at Enon near Salim because water was abundant there and people kept coming and were being baptised. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and the Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptising, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. He whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For he gives the Spirit without measure. The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in his hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, grant us understanding of your word this day. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So this passage puts um, very much into perspective the place that Jesus should have. John quite clearly testifies that, look, Jesus has, has come from heaven. Um, and of himself, John says, I'm from the earth. I know my place, you know, um, and, and it is my role to be content, to be, um, as it were, the friend of the bridegroom. What we would call these days the best man. But ultimately, it's not the best man who is, is the, um, the important person here. It is the groom. Now, of course, um, every, every lady knows that the most important person in the world when it comes to a wedding is, is the bride. Uh, yes, we know that. And that's why uh, Jesus refers to his church as, as his bride. Uh, I often, um, as part of the talk at a wedding, I always do the, the, the wedding the wedding quiz. So um, so I'll, I'll, I'll say to the, the newly married couple, to, to the new husband, and I'll, and I'll say, because I know what the answer is going to be, and I'll say to him, so who is the most important person in the world? And the husband, nine times out of ten, um, will turn and say, she is pointing to his bride and then when i ask the bride the same question who is the most important person in the world of herself she will say i am but in this passage in the culture that jesus is talking about what he's saying is this it's enough for the friend of the bridegroom to make all the preparations but ultimately he must go into the background once his task is finished it's up to the husband to take the place not his and he moves out of the way because jesus is the bridegroom of the church the bride that he loves and there is a key to christian ministry here because whether it's through the second coming of jesus which we're let's face it face it 2023 years closer uh, today um, than we were before um, and so the time is near, but people have been saying that for 2,000 years, but the time is near because we're ever closer to the coming of Jesus. When that happens, he will take the prominence and we will be part of his kingdom for those who have opened their hearts to him and to his lordship. But then we must also decrease that whilst we're waiting for the second coming, there will be a day where whatever we built upon this earth in both cases actually we're going to leave behind us because it will be a new day and a new start so it's with that um sober approach that um i look, I look at ministry in two ways that we we hold it tightly in as much as let's be responsible for the gifts that god has given to us and use those spiritual gifts that he's given to, to every single one of us. So we, we hold that tightly. That's about responsibility. But we hold it lightly. Because we know that whatever gift we've got. One day ultimately we need to surrender all to God. And the future belongs to him. And God can at any moment. If, if we're working over here. Say to us I want you to be over here now. Or we're doing a certain ministry. God can at any moment say, but I want you to move into this now. And that applies to every single Christian, actually. That whatever gifts God has given to us, we hold them tightly. Yeah, we're responsible for this and we, we value this, but we hold it lightly because God might say, no, it's time to pass this on. And that was the ministry of John. The fact that more people are going to Jesus to be baptised, John recognises, well, this is what I came to do. It was my role to make preparations for the coming of the Messiah. I'm content now that I've done everything I need to do. And in, the note here is um, in that first paragraph that I read. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. And John will gradually fade into the background. And Jesus will become more prominent. But that's our ministry too. That we must fade into the background and put Jesus at the forefront that is the heart of christian ministry and if we're going to talk about success of christian ministry it's 
if at the end of the day people have their focus on Jesus then we've done what we need to do so whatever we do today may our focus be on Jesus and when people look at us as Christians may their focus be turned to Christ as well may we be content for him to become greater and for us to become lesser amen Lord we ask that we would live our lives with the right perspective knowing that the kingdom belongs to you that you are the saviour of the world and it's our task to point people to you to say here is Jesus the son of God the saviour of the world amen going to um, go straight to prayer today And so we'll come to the the collect um, the prayer for today in just a moment. Let's still our hearts come before the Lord first of all with our thanksgivings, lift our hearts to Him. We thank you, Lord, for a new day. We thank you for the food that you provide, the clothes on our bodies, the homes where we live, the strength that we need whether we're at work, whether we're actively retired, whatever our position is, we rely on you for our strength and we give you thanks. We come to you today, Lord, with our praises and we bless you and we bless your holy name. In the silence of our hearts, let us bring to Almighty God those who need his healing touch. In the silence of our hearts, let us remember those in need in this country who are struggling financially with the cost of living, with the pressures of family life. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for those who will use the services of Comfort Cafe today. We pray for the service users and the service providers. Let us in the silence of our hearts remember the people of Turkey and Syria <coughs> following another tremor, another earthquake same region and as we pray for God's wider world let us remember the people of Ukraine as it's the anniversary yesterday of 12 months since the invasion And as we draw closer now to the end of our prayers, let us bring to Almighty God those things upon our own hearts this day. The prayer for today. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god now and forever amen as our savior taught us so we pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Well, folks, see you soon. Um, believe it or not, Ash Wednesday tomorrow, so there's a service at 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, Book of Common Prayer and a service in the evening at seven o'clock 
in modern English, both of them um, reflecting on the fact it's, it's Ash Wednesday. And then um, I was going to say something else. Morning prayers on Thursday. Then look out for, for night prayer, which was recorded yesterday. Um, that's sign language. That means yesterday, by the way. And then um, do do um, come on to the services on, on Sunday, 10.30 in the morning and 6 o'clock in the evening. Have a blessed day as we finish. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. See you soon, folks.